Welcome to Kiffin's Keep, an intellectual resource for the pillar and buttress of the truth, which is the church. This is a project of the London Lyceum, which is all about serious thinking for a serious church. I'm Jordan Svaniak, president of the London Lyceum and host of Kiffin's Keep. And as always, I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Before we jump into the video, remember, like the video if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss any of the awesome stuff that we produce. And then don't forget to drop a comment. And let me know if you liked it or didn't like it or agreed or disagreed. Topic for this is going to be a little bit evergreen. It's going to be on online seminary if you should do it, if you shouldn't do it. And I might get a little bit cheeky in this episode because I just realized that when I recorded several episodes the other evening, I recorded them in audio only format and didn't record the video like a fool. And so here I am re-recording these, and so we'll see what happens as I get to them. There was a couple of things I wanted to discuss when it came to online seminary, because there are quite a few questions that I get or I see about should I do online seminary or should I not, or should I go to the local seminary that's by me that is a different denomination or is lower quality, things like that. And so I figured I'd make an episode that sort of engaged some of these questions and hopefully started the conversation. A lot of these episodes are designed not as end-all be-alls, but as sort of beginning, let's get the conversation moving to prime the intellectual pump, to ask the right questions, to engage, to use our wisdom and and to apply our own context and own and own realities to the situation. So what is online seminary? Well, I think everybody pretty well knows what online seminary is, but I'll give you the basic contours of it. It's like pretty much any other online program now at a university. Um, over the last 10 to 15, 20 years, there's been a proliferation of online education, and it has changed somewhat over the years, but it's still pretty consistent, at least at this point, to be something along the lines of it's a it's a program that's delivered online, just like if a residential program would be, except you have typically recorded lectures, you have like discussion boards, which is supposed to be your forced, I don't know, forced sort of community engagement. And then you have your typical other assignments, your reading and, and whatever. And so you complete this all virtually, and then that's it. There are some programs that offer synchronous lectures where you actually have the opportunity to engage with the professor and hear from them, um, some more or less, and there is, but there's always pretty much the manufactured discussion board sort of content where you have to engage in that ways. Though there are different pl places trying to think about how do we solve for this. Anyway, that's generally what it is. Why do people do online seminary? Well, flexibility, right? The, the, the number one reason in my mind is I have a job or I have a family or I have a reason to live where I live right now and can't move to X place and therefore I will go to seminary online because I don't have the option or ability to move or because I don't want to move. That really boils down to it. I, some people say cost is a factor. And I can't really imagine cost being a big factor just because most online seminaries are potentially or the same price as a residential or more expensive because they're surcharging for it to try to get you to go residential, as you should. Lay my cards on the table. However, maybe there's the, the cost factor of I already have a good job and if I go there, then I won't have a job and therefore it is more expensive in some sort of fashion or way. Or maybe you want to go to a school that's in LA and so yeah, it is more expensive. Therefore, if you can do it online, then it is cheaper. Those are the typically, in my mind, the reasons why people do online seminary. What are you giving up when you do online seminary? Well, I think you're giving up quite a bit, to be honest with you. You're giving up primarily a people and a place. So you're giving up significantly a community of people, friends and mentors, classmates and professors and other administrators and other people that you would, might meet along the way. You're giving that up. And that, to me, is the greatest possible reason that you would want to be residential. You build relationships and friendships with people that you would not otherwise have. There's always this old maxim of you go to seminary and you build relationships that last a lifetime and help fuel you and sustain you in your ministry. Because there are people who get it and understand it 
and are doing ministry in other contexts. And so when you're empty and feeling dry, you have friends who understand what that's like and can help push you to sustain you. And so those are very, very valuable that they last a lifetime and can serve you. You wouldn't have those otherwise. And you have mentors and professors and other people who can help guide you and educate you and teach you and tell you about life and how to handle to be a disciple and things like that, that you don't get in an online context. I don't care how the format's delivered in an online context. You will not have the relationship with the professor that you would have if you are in person in a physical class. There is something, whatever, I don't know the science behind it exactly, but there is something very real that is substantially different about being in a particular place with flesh and blood people in the room. Even these hybrid sort of contexts where you have some people in the class and some people that are on, on Zoom, it, yes, it is a good thing to have that as an option. However, all things considered, you want to be physically there. You have the opportunity prior to class, before class, and in between classes to be discussing and thinking and asking questions and building, making friendships. I mean, you just... Without being residential, you can't do that. So go move somewhere. Do what you need to do to get there if you need a seminary education. You also might lose out on a library. And I understand some people live close to libraries. So say, for example, for me, I live in the Raleigh area. I've got like five libraries. I can go to Duke. I can go to Carolina. I can go to State. I can go to Southeastern. I can go to a bunch of places. So you could, I could theoretically do an online program anywhere and have all the library resources that I needed. That's not the case for everybody, though. And so you do can potentially lose that, but you really are going to also lose a quality of lecture. I don't care how the, the experience is concocted. You do miss something being in person. There is something about being in person that forces you to engage in a different, unique way. I, I don't know what it is. I, I can't explain it, but you lose something being online, even when you are totally, wholly, fully engaged you will lose a little bit of something by not being in person. There is something that God created intrinsically in us to be embodied creatures in physical places with other physical people. And when you take that away, you are losing something. I mean, I don't think I have to intuitively explain this very much. You can very think of all sorts of examples. Christmas is coming up. I don't know when this video will drop, but let's say it's close to Christmas and you're thinking, Christmas with your family, what's the difference between actually going there and being there for the dinner and opening presents together versus eating dinner together virtually? You eat and they eat in a different place and you have your camera set up so you can see each other and talk to each other. You can watch each other open, vit, open presents or whatever it is. Clearly something's missing. There is something substantial that is gone from that interaction that you will lose by being virtual. And so, yes, you need to go do residential seminary if that's what you need. And yes, it might extend your seminary time, but that's probably a good thing, especially for young men. You need more time of seasoning. I know you don't want to hear that if you're in your 20s, mid 20s or late 20s. You need more time to be patient, to not be leading a bunch of stuff. It's good to be the person who is being trained and taught and explained, and it will provide, it'll save you a lot of heartache, I think, in, in, in the future and the long term. So really, in my mind, online seminary, you're losing that people and that place. And those are really crucial ingredients to formation, to spiritual formation, to formation as a pastor, to formation as a theologian. Those are ingredients that just you need. However, what if this truly is your own option? Because it is your only option in some context. And maybe it is a better option to potentially in some context. You have to exercise wisdom to understand if that's actually true for you. So if it is your only option, I say go somewhere that gives you the best possible options for an online format. You want people who are programs that give you real access to professors, real lectures, not just pre-recorded stuff. You want programs that offer hybrid intensive sort of formats where you can actually go for a couple of days if possible to build friendships and relationships and engage in those ways. You want programs that 
focus on that are that are trying to bridge the gap, trying to be flexible, but also pr- trying to require you to have that opportunity to build relationships and connections with people, because those are crucial in the ever increasing need to go online for a lot of these programs, because just there's a decreasing number of students, et cetera. There is a need to be creative in this space to think about how can we have people in place while being virtual. And I think there are programs that are trying to think about that, trying to do that, trying to offer that. And so I would recommend if that's you, then you do that. So maybe though your question is, if online seminary is my only option, should I even go to seminary? It depends on your depends on your goals. Um, I guess, the, and the other question was, if there's a bad seminary near me, would I rather do that than do a good seminary online? Well, I don't know. I'd probably say you should do the residential one because there is there is some there are just goods that are tied up in the reality of a real place that you are irreplaceable in a virtual context, and you'll get a better education, even if they are worse professors and teaching things that are erroneous, than you would in a sort of virtual format where oftentimes people are watching pre-recorded lectures and sort of like halfway listening as they're doing the dishes. They're not really engaged in a classroom, being forced to think, being forced to make eye contact, being forced to ask questions or being forced to to answer questions. You need to be in a real place. And I understand there are people even in residential classes who are just goofing off and looking at the internet or whatever. Shame on them. That doesn't take away from the value of the residential education. And so my opinion I'm very stressed. This is an opinion, though it is a strong opinion, is that online seminary is definitely subservient to residential seminaries. Residential seminary is significantly better in every possible way. However, online seminary does give that flexibility, and there is some value in that. Maybe you're already a pastor somewhere embedded in that. You don't want to leave that that role, that vocation, but you feel like you need extra additional training. And so in that sense, yes, you should consider these different options, though you want to probably prioritize programs that have hybrid options, that have real access to professors and to students, and that you can build real friendships. I know that's becoming more and more common. And I do think that this is more of a discussion, like I'm less leery of hybrid sort of distance formats for higher, higher education when you think about your postgraduate education, thinking PhD level stuff where it's research lonely in the library, you don't necessarily less less coursework. I'm thinking more MDiv when I say Master of Divinity or Master of Arts, where you think online sort of seminary is not nearly as good as you could have residentially. If all you're doing is writing a dissertation, you can compensate a lot more because you're not worried so much about some of the other factors, but you're still missing and losing out. It's still not the best of the best. You still lose out on sort of just one-off conversations that you might have with people that you would have never had in a virtual context. You don't walk by an office and just happen to run into somebody and they ask you questions and talk to you and then you get into a conversation. You don't have that when you're not residential. So really my main point here is yes, online can be a suitable option depending on your context, but it really depends on that. And you need to exercise wisdom and think about it. Maybe it's, maybe it's a good option for you. Maybe it's the best option for you, but by and large, if you want to be a pastor and you're young, you need to be residentially going in and rolling in a seminary. No questions asked, make the sacrifice, do it. It's scary. Whatever it is, you need to do it. Go residentially to wherever you need to go. Need to move? Move. Whatever it takes, do it. So that's my take on this. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Do you have other thoughts? I don't know. You tell me. Hopefully this has been useful and helpful. I appreciate you guys tuning in to all these episodes. I think it's pretty cool that people watch and listen and benefit in some way. That is awesome. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Kidman's Keep, and I look forward to thinking with you guys.